Yep, we're good. You can start. You want to start with the minutes? Yeah. Three yeah. Take the minutes to begin with. The, uh, well, I uh, I move we accept the minutes for the July twenty July thirteenth meeting and uh, for the July twenty seventh meeting. Um, yeah, uh, I second the July thirteenth, July twenty seventh. I have pizza, a couple of pizza things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Which is pizza? Okay. On the first page. Um, where it says 102839. Yep. Onus of the wire telecommunications facility, and your little underlining there has gone too far to the left. And you see that it's sort of eating the comma on facility. It's it's underlined their successors and assignees. I'm not sure why those are underlined. But they are. Need. I believe that's to reflect the change. Correct. I oh, okay. can look at yeah. that. Yeah, okay. Three nine. Because the original language was a telecommunication facility and his or her successors and the signs agreed to. Yeah, okay. And this was this was correction, except that now the underline under the word there. Go, goes over the space, I mean, under the space and under the comma in the facility. Right, because there was no original comma there, so I'm adding it in there. Okay, but the underlying needs to, is, is going too far to the left. Okay, but it's still going to say owner, owner of the wireless telecommunications facility, comma, comma their successors. Their successors. Okay. Yeah, it, other than that, it's right. It's just that visually that's kind of hard okay. to understand. And then um, the second to last one, 1031 pavement striping was it, and you have pave, pavement stripping, yep. so a P needs to come out there. Yeah. Okay. And I also noticed a error under minutes. It should say minutes were not approved because there was not a quorum. I said no to yeah. approve. So. Um, those are the only changes. Borrow. Is it borrow piece or borrow piece? Borrow. Borrow piece. B O R. B O R. B O R. We have B U R on the next page down towards the bottom. It's just about getting next. Hey, where? Uh, see, do you see where I'm? Page two. Yes. We got it. Next to bed and breakfast? No, just above bed and breakfast. Oh. Okay. okay. I and see. Um, above that, marine recreation, uh, Max and Elaine pointed out that there are public landings and that the previous discussion had people not wanting it in their neighborhoods, correct? Okay. So you need an IND. Uh, uh, page three, logic and boarding. Yep. To the second sentence, this use will add the ability, not yep. will be added. All right. And last one, uh, manufactured home park. Yep. Historic village and downtown will not allow, okay. right, manufactured home park. So we need to approve house, yeah? Yep, if there's no other change. Yep. So we just call for a vote. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sarah? Aye. Aye. Sarah votes twice. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to move on? Yep. Around the use chart, um, K 
H3 and the commercial uses, cafes and delis. We'll just go through one by one. If no one has any comments, we'll just move on to the next one. Any comments? No. Moving on to campground and tenting ground, small. Is that like a little private? Sort of thing. Yeah, we have a definition of that of the uses uh, oh, in the, uh, yeah. yeah, and then, and then camp, camping and tank grounds large. Uh, Joel, are, Bill, yeah, um, because I didn't think I was going to make this and didn't prepare for it, could I ask you to tell me <clears throat> when you're going through these sections if there's a change that's been made? Uh, if you have the chart in front of you, you should okay. be able to see what the changes are if they are bold. Okay, well, I don't have it in front of me because I did not get prepared and now I'm in the meeting. So, uh, uh, never mind. It, if there's something that is notably changed, just make a yeah. point of mentioning, please. Well, camping and tenting ground small is a new category. We wanted, in our initial discussion, we wanted to differentiate between smaller scale and larger scale campgrounds. That, so that's an entirely new category, which is a wise thing to do. And this is commercial, correct? Right. Yeah, that's, I was wondering about that commercial and it's in residential. No, campground to be a, for a small city. campground. It is small residential right. yeah. for small, yes. Is there a number of sites that I'm not seeing because I'm not looking? Is there a number of sites that makes it big or small? Yeah, that was, we went through that in the specific performance standards. Um, I'm going to have to look it up. Well, you know, that, as I, I just wondered if that was the... the that was, um, hang on. I, I, and that's okay. That's okay. As long as I, the, there's that rationale is my only real question. There was a time I would have remembered something like that. I would have been prepared for the meeting. I feel it's... Hang on for a minute. I can, well, I can find it if you want to focus on everything else. I withdraw the question. Oh, here it is. Uh, small campgrounds, minimum of two acres, uh, and they're limited to a size of 10 units or sites. Large campgrounds, a minimum, uh, large campgrounds are 10 acres and a maximum of 100 units or sites. Do you have any small campgrounds? Is that the definition? Oh, that's in the not in the specific standard. Standard. Yeah, performance. Okay. Um, I'm not sure we do, but uh, oh yeah, we do. Um, um, there's Topsail Farm. Topsail but I, Farms is small. Yeah. Yeah. I believe they have only have ten. Or I mean, we, there's a possibility. I think that. You know, if, if people, um, you know, expand the farm or something like that, that small campground, I, I think that's something we could reasonably see. Yeah, they might have, I was thinking they might have programs for children. Well, that's possible. You know, like yeah, yeah. They just have a lot of that in the future. Oh, yeah. So. I, I, and again, I apologize for- and Large campgrounds. We haven't changed the designation. They're allowed in rural and uh, Route 1A, both with planning board approval. And then catering, um, we allow that. That's allowed just about everywhere, but in the um, rural, residential, village, and historic village, um, instead of CEO, it's CEO and planner. How many catering businesses do we have in Walterboro? I think it's how many catering businesses are in Walterboro? I know there's two. Right. Yeah, and what this change does is originally it was allowed anywhere, but the bolded areas uh, had planning board approval. So this would just bring it down to uh, CEO and planning. I mean, these don't allow, people don't come to these sites, they prepare foods and ship them out. So. I mean, there's like segmental traffic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, probably some good aroma. Yeah. 
I remember once we, we had an apartment in the city near a bakery. When we first moved there, we were there for a very short time. We, we thought we'd love it. After about a month, we got a little tired yeah. of that. Uh, then early morning hours, it, it snowed. And they delivered the flour sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, ne on the next page, child care facilities. Actually, we haven't changed anything here except in the industrial district at someone's behest, that I won't name the person, uh, they're now allowed with the plan. Which was a smart idea because uh, a lot of business parks or whatever offer this kind of uh, service. I'm just going to keep on moving unless somebody says something, okay? All right, clubs and civic and uh, uh, civic and service, um, the, the planning board approval across the board. Yeah, this is combining two uh, categories, categories that were separate. And, yeah. and then it's probably a wise choice because there's traffic concerns and things like that potentially. Um, construction services that has not changed. And that's planning board across the board. Uh, convenience store with fuel sale uh, sales. Um, that's planning board. Except, uh, and that um, in the rural village, it, it's planning board. Right. Originally, it wasn't allowed there, but yeah. this will allow it in that area yeah. with planning board. Yeah, and that's a wide, you know, we, we have the fuel sales um, that increases the traffic impact dramatically. And then convenience store without fuel sales um, in the rural village and downtown, they're allowed with uh, um, you know, and plan to review, but the Route 1A and B district, they're allowed with planning board. And then cottage industries, um, they're allowed a rural downtown Route 1A and Route B. And they will and become prohibited in industrial. Industrial, yeah. And then the planning board in the rural. Area. And then crematorium. This is a new use. Your new use, rural planning board, Route 1A and industrial, it's allowed with planning board. These have become, um, um, Thomaston is just going through this approving one. And um, the public gets very involved in the crematoriums because of uh, concerns about odor and things like that. So it's good to have planning board review and things like that. Distribution fulfillment centers, that's a new category. Um, basically, um, areas where products are brought in and shipped out. Uh, they're allowed rural, Route 1A, Route 1B, planning board approved. Why would that not be uh, uh, allowable in the industrial so. Um Potentially, it could. It could. I I think I'd have to look at the minutes, but I think the reason we didn't have an industrial is because we just wanted large space and it wasn't the same as a warehouse. I think Freeman was the one who was more knowledgeable on this topic. So Freeman, was there any reason to not have it an industrial? Well, how many acres are in your industrial park now? The, wait, in all industrial zones or just the business park? Just the business park. George would answer that. Uh, George, we couldn't hear you. Are you muted or? Try again. You're still muted. I know, it seems to me that would be a, uh, a use that would be consistent with an industrial zone. Yeah, it would the be. The only reason not to include it would be space if there was some higher, you know, if it's at the lower use versus 
other activity. Yeah. All right. Since I since I don't know the amount of acreage you have, or all I can tell you is that a modern fulfillment center would take anywhere from ten to twenty five to twenty acres. Um, given how they're now, you know, they how they're constructed, how much space they need for trucking. In yeah. other words, there's a lot of auxiliary space. And then the access normally, for example, someone might want to have um, access on Route A, 1A or B, but probably then go to rural because the land's cheaper. So I, I don't know the answer to industrial. It's up, up to you. I, uh, you can put it in. It, uh, again, it's economics. Am, am I still not being heard? Uh, you're very faint. I don't know if you if you uh, turn down the sensitivity on your mic or anything. I don't think I can you hear me now? Right. Anyway, 60 acres, six zero acres. 60 acres is what uh, George said for those who can't hear. Yeah. Well, then you could put it in. I mean, yeah. it's planning board, so you still have a lot of control. Put it in. Okay. It doesn't preclude in the future expanding the industrial zone to another area, too. Right. True. Yes. There's lots of good area near the business park. There's going to be a big solar farm up there. There's there's lots of area that can be yeah, that use. I wish I could be heard. This is frustrating. I can still hear you, and I can just repeat what you're saying, just so everyone in this room can hear. Did your volume control go down? I don't even know of a volume control on this. Because we heard you before better. Yeah. Fine now. Um, might have been something in your settings you might have accidentally touched. Um, George, go to the bottom left of your screen on the button that says mute and click the arrow. And then it choose the other option under select a microphone. Same as is that better? No, but again, I can just repeat what you're saying. Uh, what George said earlier was that there is plenty of roof up in that area. There is a solar farm that is going to be built in the, it's in the rural area, but unless George, you're telling me there's a solar farm that's going to be built in the industrial park. No, no, no. But no. What I'm saying is that the area around uh, North Nobleboro Road on both sides, because of the- He means land adjacent. Right. There's a lot of land up, up yeah. near Route 32. And a fulfillment area, it could be, fulfillment could be part of some other business too. Um, anyway, I, I, I do think it belongs in industrial. So if that's, if that people have agreed to that, then I'm good. So George is fine adding it into right. industrial. Why don't we go on to um, drive through restaurants? I don't think we changed this at all. It's planning board in Route 1A and Route 1B. Um, this is Sarah. I have a question. Yep. Um, what is the definition of a drive through restaurant? I mean, is it literally a restaurant where you drive through and grab coffee or? Uh, um, no, it would be a restaurant that offers that service. Uh, I believe we added a definition to that. Okay. Uh, restaurant drive through. Restaurant drive through. Yes. I kept all the restaurant ones okay, in the same yeah, area. Um, and it can be amended. An establishment that by design, physical facilities, service, or packing procedures encourages or permits customers to receive food while remaining in their motor vehicles. If a restaurant requires a customer to leave their vehicle, then it is not a drive through. I think that last sentence we could probably take out if we want. This was from the book. Have any drive-through restaurants in Walterboro right now? By this definition? Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Okay. This could be like a McDonald's, a Wendy's, yeah. you know, something like that. Or I think Odd Alewives had a very similar take on this a few months ago before they opened back up, yeah. where you know, went there you, and you just pulled up to their kitchen and they handed the stuff through the window. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I, we, we've come, we actually have come across a new nuance activity for drive through. So, yeah, uh, curbside, yeah, curbside, yeah, right, and 
that that was never really envisioned uh, as, as a typical drive through where there's a separate lane, but but it's evolved into well, I mean, but is that what I'm thinking is that the, <coughs> the current the current package is just a, a response to an emergency. And do you think a lot of restaurants are going to continue to provide that service even when the emergency goes away? No, probably not. I, I, you know, I don't think they need to. Yeah. No, the drive throughs are, we look at them at least in the land use here as a separate category because they are, it's a whole different traffic pattern that they create. There's, there's an increase in traffic, there's a quicker turnaround. I mean, it could either be a, a you know place that sells food uh, strictly drive through No. Or it could also be a, a, a Kentucky Fried Chicken, McDonald's, a Burger King, yeah. whatever. They, they, they do have uh, indoor facilities where people can sit. Yeah, yeah and that's what that's it is. That's what it is. But it seems to me that a... a, a, a a place that does not have the indoor facility but has people driving through would also be included. That's absolutely right. Okay. Those are rare that just do the drive. I think I'm all like on Congress. Aroma Joe. Well, yeah. Oh. We love that coffee shop. Yeah. yeah. So am I getting rid of that last sentence then? Just no, that can stop. But the last sentence is pretty much saying that if they have to leave, like, if there's a hybrid model, then it wouldn't be a drive through according to that last. That last sentence is something I added. In. That, that should be taken. Okay. Right. Um, echo tourism. That's a new category. I think this was actually something I was going to take out. I think we should take out because it yeah. pretty much falls under agricultural. Uh, related business at this right. point. So that will come out. Just a redundant use. And then the next Wait. Someone saying something? Yeah. Are we eliminating ecotourism? Yes, because we have the same thing, because it's the same definition as agricultural related business. Okay. And yeah, I think it even has, let me quickly check. I think the only difference is that agricultural, yeah, a small agricultural related business can be done anywhere, but a larger event, which is for a larger one, more focused on that, that's just restricted to rural residential, rural village and the route one district. So it wouldn't be in the village. Uh, then event center, these are new categories. We have it designated as minor and major, and all of them require planning board approval. It's in the performance standard. Yeah, we did this. This is a relatively new category, but they can be traffic. And the way um, you know, there, there would be concerns with traffic intensity and, and maybe noise. So it's probably good to have planning board review them. At least in other communities, um, you know, where they've gone in. The only exception where it's not much of a difficulty is when they're attached to a, uh, like a hotel or motel or larger restaurant. And that presumably is already in an area that's appropriately zoned for um, that kind of activity. I do have them split up um, major and minor. So you didn't have that? It's in the performance standard, not in the definition. Yeah, but um, on, the, on this chart. Right. About, yeah. Right? There's right. two here. Yeah. And then the next is farm garden commercial activity. Um, we have those planning board and rural and rural village and in Route 1A and Route 1B, it's uh, CEO and planner. What's the difference between a farm and a garden? Uh, this would be a, a commercial a one. Commercial activity, but 
like a farm center and garden center. Oh, yeah. really, just a term of art to describe. So, <laughs> so like moose cross. Moose cross. Moose cross. Right. right. Yeah, okay. A farm center could be like an agway. Oh, no. Yeah. A parish union, something like that. Farm stand, I understand. Yeah. Farm stand is CEO. Nothing changed. Yeah. A farmer's market. Uh, and so planning board in in the residential area and code and planner in every other area. I think I think it just didn't have originally uh, it just wasn't allowed in the residential and industrial. I don't know if we wanted to have farmers market in the residential district though. Would that be like that's farm market or bigger or smaller or what? Are you talking about the recent farmers market she's doing or are you talking about what her business is? No, I'm saying what do we have in Waldemar that would be considered a farmer's market? Yeah, the one we have out here. That's it? Yeah, oh. that's the only one. Oh, okay. Right. Well, hey. you know, the one that we used to be up at the. Oh, the yeah. No. No. It's on front of it. But that, I mean, that. Uh, Oh, okay, you do have an area. Yeah. I mean, some there are a couple of towns that have more than one. Right. But, you know, more than one just have one. Uh, it's going away, actually. Yeah. So you were questioning residential? Well, yeah, I always, yeah, people sometimes don't want things in the residential district, so that's why I'm wondering if that's something we want to include or not. That's where we put it in the planning board originally. Right. There, there could be a lot of car traffic with a successful farmer's market. Yeah. yeah. Right. Our next one, financial institution banks. We have that as a separate category, rural village, village, historic village. We have them as planning board. In the downtown, we have I think that to uh, CEO um, and planner. Okay. And then food trucks. This would be an individual food truck, a CEO planner, all areas except the residential district. And then uh, food truck center. This is a new category. Um, this would be for more than one, a locus for a number of food trucks. It's a growing trend. Um, it, it's actually very popular. So, and those are planning boards in rural village, village, Route 1A, Route 1B, and in the industrial district. Uh, fuel storage distribution, uh, the planning board and the route, um, the route one district, and we included them in the uh, industrial district. Thank you, George. They just sat back down. And then funeral homes, we didn't make any change there. We have one in town, right, just one. In a home? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, next page um, golf courses, driving range. We haven't um, made any changes there. Rural right in the Route 1A and B district. Rural. Yeah. Uh, gun club. That would be the more likely. Yeah. A uh, shooting range is a new category that's allowed in the rural district. I didn't know where else we wanted to put it. Figured rural was at least a safe bet. And that would be planning board because there would be yep. all kinds of uh, uh, noise. Wow. Safety and yeah. Of hotel inns, overnight cabins. Uh, that remained the same, except in the downtown, it's a CEO planner. Yep. 
Um, we just lost George. I don't know why. He might be coming back. Right. Um, Kennels. Oh, commercial. there he is. He back. Yep. Don't know why. I have just changed the computers. Maybe, or... Don't know. Oh, there he is. Is the sound any better? You hear me now? I can faintly hear you. It doesn't sound much better, George. I just took out. I left and came back. I can. You guys know me well enough to know it's gonna make my head explode if I can't be heard. But anyway. Go ahead. If I disappear, figure I voted yes. Uh, I mean, we can keep trying as is, and I'll just, just we have to proceed with the meeting. I'm. Yeah, I'll just frequently look up more at the chat, just in case I can't hear you. All right. Thanks. Um, kennels, commercial, no changes there. Sarah, do you have any recommendations for this category? Um, no. All right. Uh, the only reason I asked is I know it came up planning board. Yeah. yeah. Um, we did review a kennel. Um, <coughs> but I, th I think, I don't think we have anything to add to it. Right. Um, kiosk. Everything's the same except in village and historic village. Uh, they're now uh, CEO and planner. Uh, land-based aquaculture, and this is land-based, something like uh, the uh, American EO operation. Yeah, that's planning board in rural Route One A, Route One B, and the industrial district. Uh, laundromats, dry cleaning, planning board, rural village, downtown, that we have, that remains the same, no changes. Uh, marinas are planning board across the board, and the downtown and Route 1A, they're planning board. Um, would we, can we consider putting that in an industrial zone also? The marina? I'm thinking of Syl the Sylvania property. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts? I, if, Sylvania if, property. If we should, one. if we can. It's on the river. I mean, I, I know where it is, but yeah, go the long way down. George, George said, if we can, then why not? It, it just it leaves open the possibility that planning board approval. I assume. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So where would that be? Uh, under Marina at for the, industrial. Industrial, okay. Because, because the Osram property is already zoned industrial, I believe. That's correct. correct. Yeah. Right. So yeah, and so there is a riverfront the there, and with some investment, that could become a marina. Agreed. Yeah. Um, medical offices, we haven't changed that at all. It's planning board across the chart. What would a medical office do for a single practitioner be a home occupation? It could. Okay. Yeah, that, that used to be fairly common. It's becoming less common. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's one. On, uh, oh, yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's relatively new, too. Yeah, I mean, some guys want a house. Yeah. And yeah. um, methadone clinic, it's only allowed in Route 1A. We haven't changed that. Um, minor commercial additions, um, CEO permits. What um, is there a definition for that? Minor commercial additions. Yeah. Um, it's in. It's on page twenty-one. This is the same one that we've had in the ordinance. All right. Uh, additions to commercial structures, which range in size between five hundred square feet and fifteen hundred square feet. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I read that totally wrong. Uh, 
should be between minimum lot width and minor development. Okay, yeah, I see it. Okay. Would it be reasonable to consider that a minor <laughs> addition isn't based on square feet, but based on the percentage increase in the building you're attaching to? Um, like, can you give an example? Well, um, if you were going to add a, a part to a building and it was going to increase the area of the building by 7%, does that make it a minor addition and, and make it a little easier to do? Okay. Of course, it depends on the size of the building you're adding to, but in the industrial park, that kind of matters. I mean, there's some big buildings there. 20%. 20%. Seven. I just said that as an example. I mean, you, you could say 10 or something, but uh, as opposed to just 500 square feet is is nothing on a 20,000 square foot building. But 1,000 square feet, potentially, which would be 5%. Um, it's just minor. What I was thinking is you had a yeah. 500, existing 500 square foot to add on uh, 1,500 square feet would be quadrupling it. Yeah. That so you're thinking in, you're thinking in terms of impact as opposed to square footage. Impact is, I, I think, a more important criteria than number of square feet. So if you're an industrial park and you're putting a 800 square foot building onto a 20,000 square foot building, you probably aren't going to change anything about the neighborhood or the activity or anything else. So just, just a request. Well, it sounds like Sherry, do you want have anything to say on this issue? I I agree with what George says. All right. So, so it's, if we, if we, we're not changing the chart, but we're changing the definition. I mean, right, right, right. Yeah. You could have that five hundred to fifteen hundred, but 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 not to exceed X percent of the existing area. Well, that, that would be kind of uh, that, well, you'd have to say one or the other, whichever is greater. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't make any sense if, if the greater one would be, oh, I, I see what you mean. You have a very small commercial building. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So additions to commercial structures, uh, not to exceed. I would say 10%. 10%. Yeah. I would, I would go up to 10. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Additions to be more generous than that. But what were you thinking? Yeah, 50%. Oh, 50. 50%. Yeah. Well, but then if you have a 20,000 square foot building. Yeah. You would have to maybe make a limit to what you would consider the size of the business as it existed. Right. I mean, you said well, it all depends. It really depends where it is. Yeah. I mean, in, 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 you know, well, I mean, in the more densely developed areas, you know, uh, yeah. that would be a concern. Well, I, I think the reason it might only go up to 1500 square feet is because in the ordinance it says if you create like I think 1500 square feet was a key thing for site plans for planning board yeah but that that's changing that's not okay that, that's so if that's changing then yeah we can change it to 10 percent or whatever yeah so or, or you might have different standards in the industrial park versus rural well, the only difference, George, would be is that um, the minor, if it's minor, he just gets a code officer permit. If it exceeds that, he'd have to go to the planning board or the code officer plan or so. Well, so that, it, it, so what I think I just heard is that if it was 10% of the building you're attaching to, it would be code enforcement as opposed to planning board? Basically just getting a building permit, yeah. Okay. That I think that's a good. I think ten percent is a workable number, yeah. for you know, practically speaking. All right. Um, museums and galleries. We haven't changed this at all. Uh, nursery greenhouses. It's planning board, except in the Route One A and Route One B. Really, it's a code officer plan. Does that overlap with the uh, oh, the commercial? 
Definition. Yeah, greenhouse has a. I added a definition for a greenhouse, greenhouse. but uh, let me try and find uh, commercial garden. No, I don't think I have anything for commercial garden. We can certainly combine the two. I don't think there's any difference now. Yeah, I guess. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're basically the same. Okay, um, yeah. But <clears throat> garden commercial is in very few areas, so I don't know why that would. Yeah. Nursery retail, we have it as the growing cultivation, storage, and sale of garden plants, flowers, and trees, shrubs, and fertilizers. Um, and that sounds like a Yeah. Yeah, it describes all of them. So, plants on the all. So, should we just. I, I think if we're going to combine them, a nursery retail, we should come, you know, say something. Growing culture, storage, sale of garden plants, fertilizers, and related. Equipment, the, the products, and yeah. equipment. Because they might have, you know, pots and. Well, I was thinking about that today, and I wrote it because I just find out about tools. Yeah, tools. Uh, soil, compost, yeah. you know, all of the. Yeah. It, it's so expansive now. Yeah. And, you know, and, and related. Um, Related garden and related um, garden slash farm equipment and yeah. products. Right. Yeah. And that way we could combine. Right. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Uh, this is Sarah. I I can't hear really well. All right. I, I, I think I hear what what you're saying. But um farm garden and commercial seems to me to be uh, a retail enterprise that's selling items related to farm, garden, and commercial. Whereas a um, nursery greenhouse is actually growing something and they may or may not retail it. You see what I mean? Like a nursery greenhouse could be um, a series of uh, greenhouses on a piece of property uh, growing tomatoes that they sell to Hannaford or something like that. That, that would be a farm in our definition. It if, would, okay. Yeah, the nursery would be nursery retail as, as, as opposed to just a growing operation. Um, so do we have a category for something that's just a growing operation? Well, no, that would just be considered agriculture. Oh, okay. It's growing, yeah. Max. But would you make a distinction with normal agriculture and plants unlimited? Plants unlimited would be a nerd. Well, plants unlimited doesn't grow anything. They plant it to sell. Yeah, but they, they, yeah. They, have but they have other yeah other things. They have a greenhouse. Um, I, I think it would be worthwhile just to combine the two. Yeah. Because it actually they have the same impact. Uh, and they have the same merchandise. The same okay? merchandise, Because yeah. they've got their own firm, yeah. six firm houses, yeah. exactly the same as Moose yeah. and Green Thumb. The similarity yeah. has evolved over the last few years, and right. they're all basically identical, yeah. except for price. But some some could be larger and have lawn mowers and, you know. But the nursery garden centers don't really do that. But they could. I yeah, mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's become so hot. Yeah. Uh, Max, can you hear me, Max? I can. Okay, this will not surprise you. Uh, what if I build a greenhouse and grow tomatoes in it, and then after three years decide to grow salmon in it? 
that's a change of use. Wait, what are you doing with the tomatoes? Are you doing that for like? No, I just changed my mind because the price of fish got to be better than the price. No, of but I'm saying, are you growing the tomatoes and then selling the tomatoes, or are you just growing the tomatoes for yourself and then one day you want to grow the salmon and sell the salmon? It's the second, selling the tomatoes, then changing it. The the, the point is that change aquaculture it. and agriculture are very very similar, and I think should be treated much more similarly. Um, so if I put a greenhouse up to put tanks in, it seems like. I shouldn't have a steeper climb than someone who's growing tomatoes. Yeah, the only difference, George, would be in, um, again, just looking at a purely impact is the type of water usage may increase. I mean, you can have a hydroponic growing operation that we might want to look at differently. Um, well, yeah, yeah, but I, I mean, there's a there's a whole thing called aquaponics where you have fish and plants in the same tank. Yeah, yeah. And, anyway, my, my point is that if, if now is the time, and Max and I communicated on this a little bit earlier, if we think aquaculture is something uh, attractive for the future of the state or the town, then it seems like some of the same um, attitudes about agriculture should get carried over to aquaculture. Now, that's not to say that you wouldn't have requirements about water quality, because that's an entirely different element. Although, if you're growing uh, tomatoes, there's a fair bit of water usage and discharge as well. Anyway, I, I, I just wish that um, the aquaculture had some of the same um, uh, accommodations as ag agriculture, because it's a, such a small difference, particularly if you start in a greenhouse. And you're only talking about land-based aquaculture, correct? Not yeah. Yes, yes. A changing the use of a greenhouse uh, from tomatoes to onions wouldn't go to the planning board. Changing no, no, the use no. of a greenhouse from tomatoes to pickerel shouldn't, except for the water issues, if there are water issues. Actually, we would, I think we would look at it differently if, if it was a primary use versus if somebody had a greenhouse and did something, they grew something and there was a you know, um, kind of a relationship in terms of food element for the fish versus, the, you know, what they were growing. I think we would look at what's the primary use of it and, and just go from there. And I would say it's probably we would just call it whatever the larger operation was. Well, that's a very interesting way to look at it because uh, 20 years ago, I was visiting a place out on Route 17 that had tanks of fish and they were taking the water that the fish had been living in and using it to grow lettuce. In fact, yep. we were selling it at the Narrows. So the aquaponics is a real thing. And I, and I think if we have a responsibility here, it's to make sure we look forward toward these other ways of producing food. And I'm, I'm not, I mean, if you've got a tank full of fish that are uh, producing nutrient rich water and you're cleaning the water by growing lettuce in it, it's, a, it's brilliant, and B, it's it's harmless. It's the whole issue of disposal. Of, uh, yeah. But you have the same issue of water disposal with tomatoes, depending on how they're growing them. Well, that, then what we... That perhaps pesticide and waste, though. Well, I, I, I think let's, let's just step back for a minute and say, um, let's separate out retail operations where we're looking at you know, known impacts of traffic and things like that um, versus a growing operation. Um, and and in, the, in the situation you described, George, we should probably put a, a nuanced use in to, to describe something that you just talked about. Um, I, I'd have to think for a minute. We would probably want, want to say, uh, I don't know, something, I'm, I'm not, the words aren't going to come up right, but some sort of combined activity, including one or more of, you know, hydroponics, aquaculture, agriculture, you know, at a single facility. And then we could view that as more like agriculture, like a growing operation. Uh, buildings producing food. Well, what's coming to my mind? Is that whole situation up in Belfast? The salmon farm? The salmon farm. Yeah. Uh, because clearly the, the uh, 
favors impact yeah. of that activity. You know, I think that that ought to be up to to the planning board level wherever it's allowed. So maybe we need you need to sort of reach scale work this whole. Yeah, I think what George is talking about is something uh, probably more on a well. It can be scaled much larger too. Right. Yeah. 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 That's been an ongoing raging yeah. controversy up there for yeah. George, let's let's see if we can come up with something. Yeah, and that that would be my that would be great. I, I have no idea what the answer is, but I do think that we should recognize this trend. Right, let's see if we can search for for something. But in the meantime, do you, do we want to differentiate between nurseries? Retail and farm and garden, or just combine them together. Now, again, this is a retail operation. This would be, you know, not the, just the growing, but they're predominantly grow to sell or sell. Retail as opposed to production. Production, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's where um, that's where it's at right now, and it's evolved. Oh, it's first Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Okay. So, if Something else evolves out of that. Yeah. And, and it happens. So I think that, that's what they have turned into. Yeah. And they're yeah. 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 the operations. Yeah, they could be expand Barley Joe's. Yeah. And just put in 10 more greenhouses. So yeah. that's where it's at. So it's essentially combining the two? Yeah, combining the two. The only difference we would have to do in the definition for retail nurseries is um, include the sale of. Products. All right. Yeah. Farm, you know, farm and garden. Hose. Yeah, hoses. Yeah. I mean, and then, like, um, yeah, but isn't that, you know, union farm equipment? Yeah, that would be that's, something. But that's a whole separate thing from what we're thinking of as nurseries and babies. They, they sell small stuff, they don't sell more than that. No. Well, they could, but they could. It doesn't really matter what we're saying. Yeah. You know. I don't think they need to. Well, they they you know, they would specialize. If you're going to go to something like that, you would specialize in someone sales and service of those things. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. not what we're talking about. Yeah. One of the things I think you have to be sensitive to is having regulations that uh, hinder success or don't support success. Out at Moose Crossing, there's a it's a wonderful asset for the town. There's it's a tremendously successful business, as far as I can see, by the people who park along the road. I don't know how many greenhouses they have, but I don't think you have to get a permit every time you put one up. Or, I mean, there's like 18 of them, mm -hmm. and I have nothing but good things to say about Moose Crossing. Uh, but as we're doing these regulations, um, we should be sensitive to when they might make somebody decide not to grow. Um, that's like even with the camp sizes, if it's 11, does that mean I have a whole new set of bathrooms I have to build or whatever it is? We, but we should, we, should, we should try and construct these so that they don't impede success. And, and that's a very general thing I'm saying, and I realize it, but. Um, well, I mean, currently, I mean, when new, Moose Crossing is, they would need a permit from the code officer and planner for every new yeah. greenhouse. Oh, they do? So yeah. basically a building permit. They put in like 20 of them at once, you know, a couple of years ago. Because we're moving oh, oh, yeah. you know, They just added. Yeah, they added. Four four five, yeah. Four and they had to come. Yeah. And they came to the planning board for the. No, no, they, they, they came to the planning board for storm site board. review because of the changes in the uh, storm board. Yeah. Not for the nursery and not for the nursery. Uh, greenhouses. Anyway, if somebody is growing fish in a greenhouse in a tank, um, then I, I think we should do whatever we can to to support that endeavor regulatorily. Yeah, that, that will do under the auspices of like growing and not not the retail portion. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the parking and traffic is definitely uh, changes the whole game. Um, all right. I'll be, and I think we're going to come back with some language in the future to do with agriculture. So we I will put a new category in the uh, for that combined kind of activity. Does that okay. make sense? That's, that's something you're right, George. That we'll probably see a lot more of it. So yeah. for this category that we're on, yeah. If we're combining the two, there's a huge gap in 
what districts it's allowed in. So are yeah. we just going to go with the nursery greenhouse yeah. row? Okay. All right. Next one, offices. This would be any kind of professional, whatever office. It's allowed by permit from CEO and or um, a code officer and planner. I, I don't see any uh, you know, concept of size involved in that definition. No, there isn't. Uh, <clears throat> So the question would be if someone wanted to build an office park with 50 offices in it, um, that would seem to me to generate a lot of traffic. And that might be something that ought to go to the planning board. Yeah, that's something. That, yeah, we. I mean, it would be this a nice is, problem to have. This is kind of scale to what we would see in the world. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, but you're right. That, that could potentially I mean, be one of the pitfalls. We don't. Typically, see this kind of uh, a larger scale. Um, I think the other question is uh, when you're talking about offices, are you talking about owned by one company or multiple? Like, uh, I don't think it would matter. It wouldn't matter. I mean, but I mean, so, uh, I was mean, thinking of an office park, and, and there could be condominiumized or whatever, but if, you know, that the know. ownership wouldn't impact no. you know, the. Uh, would, they would lease it or yeah. right, purchase it, it doesn't matter. I mean, for, for what we would see here in Waldenboro, I think this fits adequately. Well, I just I, don't foresee a larger office space here. Okay, well, you know, yeah. well, well when, when you're saying the larger office space, I'm imagining you're talking about um, on Jefferson Street, the professional building. I, is that what you're sort of talking about? Or are you talk? what type of offices are we talking uh, I'm about? I'm just, you know, just in, in my daily back and forth, uh, you know, in there in more densely populated areas, there are Large. buildings put up with, you know, 1,500 offices. Yeah. And, you know, if, if, if there's any possibility of something of that scale would come here, clearly that's something the planning board ought to. Okay. Uh, look at because of the again because of the uh, the traffic issue. I don't think anybody could have something that large scale would have to really study. Can you put it on Route One in Little You know, for instance, so that you would have right. access. Well, I mean, but I mean, lot, you know. just thinking, we might want to distinguish between have large and small, and have the. Uh, you know, higher criteria for a large for a large one. Yeah. And we could do that. We could we have to set some sort of upper limit. Yeah. What if somebody took, for example, AD Gray and decided to make it into offices in an existing building? Would, would we have any control of that or regulations? Yeah, I mean again, you know, with the use chart here, that would basically just be a firm. You know, it'd be it would uh, um, Co enforcement officer and planner. Right. I mean, they'd have to look at parking in terms of having adequate parking for the square footage. I mean, could, like conversion to 80 gray into offices would not be a large scale no. at all. I mean, right. perfect situation, too. Yeah, it would be fairly minimal. Yeah. You know. At the scale you're looking at, like the 128 corridor. Yeah, or something I, like I, that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like really yeah. unlikely. Yeah. But do we have other controls of the situation, situation where that came in? Yeah. And you had to say yes. Well, keep in mind, too, is that in the CP category, that allows the planner to bump that up to the planning. Board. Okay. Yeah. So okay. that's kind of a built in safety measure. Yeah. Okay. All right. What, what, what building height constraints do we have and what building footprints constraints do we have? In other words, do we already have size? Uh, limits that would preclude a giant office building? Well, we have height limits, uh, 35 feet, 42, 40 feet, excuse me, 42, 42 feet. Yeah. Um, we, we have height limits. Um, there's a density in terms of um, um, an overall um, 
density limit for the lot. So it's a lot coverage density, excuse me. So there are some things, I mean, they're pretty basic. Okay. Of course, just... you would have to supply, you know, the adequate parking to serve X amount of square footage. So that, that would have some limitations, you know, on the lot. Um, parking lots. I don't, we didn't change this at all. Uh, recreational facilities we have not changed. Uh, recycling center we haven't changed. Redemption centers. Got a few new yeah. areas. We have planning group in rural and CP in rural village, village, Route 1A and Route 1B. And just so we're just so everyone's aware of Redemption Center, that's Bottle Redemption. Bottle Redemption. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's not a church. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, research labs and facilities, that hasn't changed. Are research labs permitted in the industrial zone? Yes, with planning board approval. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, restaurants. Uh, that's planning board accepted the downtown. It's a CP code officer planner, CP. Retail sales. Um, look at the definition. We're going to go through the definitions later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, retail, retail sales, uh, planning board and rural village. And um, downtown is CP. The other districts are planning board, and that hasn't changed. And industry, and we're still on retail, right? Right. And it's being removed from industry. Yeah. Um, Self storage units, um, those are allowed. It, that hasn't changed. Route 1A and Route 1B planning board. There's only one in town right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, two. Three. There's one right across the town. Oh, office. that's right. There's, there's the one that used to be best yeah. built, and then there's one up oh, the town. Okay. Could, could we back up this planning board? But they're, they're actually the traffic impact is very low. Hmm. Could, could we back up just for a second to retail and industrial? Sure. Um, we, we are certainly don't like to do retail, but if someone comes in off the street to buy some fertilizer, it's pretty hard to not sell it to them. That's not that's not a retail operation. Group. That's wholesale, correct? That, that, that's just incidental to what you're doing. Okay, as long as that's understood. All right, that's fine then. The primary use is to produce and ship, you know. Right, yeah. okay. Uh, shopping centers. Only change is that it's being taken out of the industrial district yeah. as well because you know, retail. Could I ask a question about that? Would yeah. you, if someone built a shopping center in a historic village, would you not want to have the planning board? Yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. That that struck me. We we should probably a shopping center should see the planning board across. across. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would I would agree with that. Yeah. I mean, that's something where we want, and we don't want it in residential. Do we have provisions or foreseeable paths of action if someone tried to uh, change the use of the first floor of the sprawl block? What do you mean? If somebody wanted to put more re or put retail in the first floor of the sprawl block, people have talked about it in the past. Is that um, just go to the planning board, or do, do we well, that that to the downtown? That would be uh, assuming it's just one. It would be retail. It would just be one retail change, and that's it's code officer planning. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, yeah. So if they reconfigured the street level of the sprawl block, and I, I have no idea if anybody, I'm just making this up as I go along, but um, the uh, 
that they would just need a code officer planner permit. Okay. Code officer planner, what, what category? It's in, uh, well, it would be um, a retail operation. It would, it would affect parking and traffic is why I mentioned it. But if it's a shopping center, you're saying now you'd like to see planning board. Yeah. Uh, it seems like parking, we should always be talking about parking, I think. Yeah, I think it's parking in the back. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh, we might want to think about village, historic village, in downtown. I mean, the the common understanding of a shopping center would be like a strip center, which would be like three yeah. or four or five or six different retail uh, storefronts that are linked together in some fashion. Yeah. With parking next to it, which is, made, which is pretty significant development. So, if the first floor of the small block became those five stores, what column does that go into? And that would require a lot of parking. When we had the galleries for the last two years, not this year, but the last two years, there was there was this really nice sort of conglomeration. And it was extremely lively when we had the art walks. And everybody found a, a space because most of the galleries, you, you'd be amazed how much parking there is in Waldebro because it's behind the blocks, it's up and down the streets. So we never, we thought it was going to be awful, but we never had an issue. We had, um, at, at most times, 100 to 120 people coming through the town. So I would agree with that, but it can be done. But that was episodic. A shopping center is something that opens at nine or ten o'clock and keeps going until eight o'clock at night. It's it's a very different thing than the galleries. I agree with you, but but those weren't constant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Except that those parking places were every day. Yeah. We, we might consider. Like I said, not allowing them in village and historic village at the very least. Yeah. I don't think they're appropriate for it. Yeah. In downtown, um, I don't think there's any place for it. I don't think there's any place for it. Right. Yeah. I mean, certainly individual stores can go in operation. Yeah. Does, does that ring true for everyone? Sarah, what do you think? Um, you mean the art walk? Mm -hmm. Well, no, changing the, changing the use of shopping centers or the district they're allowed in to planning board everywhere except in village, historic village, and industrial, which would be prohibited. And, and the residential district. And the residential. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would agree with that. Center so, should have board approval. Could we accommodate multiple retail adventures in the first floor of the sprawl block? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's not a shopping center. Either. Yeah, because we're going to get to definitions, and it's going to not be a yeah, shopping. Uh, center. Yeah. Okay. Um, signs are allowed everywhere, just with a CEO permit. Except for a downtown. What? It's a CEP permit. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna say what's that? <laughs> get CP. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> make that fix. Mm -hmm. Supposed to be CEO. Yeah, yeah. CEO. I did, I would not have seen that, but somebody said that. Uh, theaters. Oh, we haven't changed anything except in the downtown. It's um, a code officer planner. Um, this is Sarah. I have a question about theaters. Um, I assume when we wrote this, that theater meant a building. And um, a theater now could be a field with an outdoor film and projection. That's a good point. So do we need to accommodate that or? Oh, it does have, it is defined in the, the definitions. Uh, page but, three, two. Right, but I mean, do we need to change the definition or do we need to uh, consider that as a different use or? 
Outdoor um, chairs? Yeah. Well, uh, it says a, a facility devoted to showing motion pictures. It, and it seems like um, what we're talking about there in the definition is a building. Yeah. Is that what the intent was? That, that was a facility. Yeah this, this, yeah, this was something that uh, very traditional in the ordinance. It never really contemplated like an outside venue, you know, a permanent or temporary a screen or something like that. Right. We places are doing that around us, um, probably seasonally, but do we want to say anything about that? I, that's a good idea. They're all over the news. Now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, popping up articles, uh, you know, we're either resurrecting the old one or quickly putting together something so yeah. that people can go in their cars and yeah. watch the latest movies. So it's a kind of big deal. Um, we can put a separate door, separate categories, outdoor, Would that be considered an event, you know, an outdoor event? Well, they keep doing them though. You know, a lot of these places opened up are going like every week. Yeah, but they're, they're probably going to be seasonal. So right. That, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, so I mean, you know, that has to be factored into how we view it. But they could be six. Yeah, six it could be more here, than you know? one. Yeah. In the event center, a large event center is allowed, but not most of that's envisioned for inside. You know, this would be something, even a minor one, it's allowed in the rural village yeah. and the route. Yeah, I'm districts. thinking there's plenty of land out there, you know, yeah. but they could, some people could set it up. Seems like sometimes even town organizations yeah. are getting together to do it to give people something to do because they're going crazy. Look, um, Sarah, let's pull together a definition and we'll get back. All right. All right. Um, the only thing I can think of that you know we'd have traditionally would be the uh, field drive-through drive-in theaters. Yeah. Different scale that you know they put one in Rockport, a municipal on a municipal uh, parcel of land, and they put in a, a screen, um, and it's a fairly decent sized screen, but um, but it, it's designed it, 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 you know it's temple. Yeah. No, no, we might not take it down, but it's not designed to be there on a permanent right. basis. But that, in other areas, I've seen these in shopping centers, yep. or shopping, larger shopping areas, where they'll put up a, um, a portable screen, or sometimes they're blow up screens, and they have movies there for kids and stuff like that. And But they do it like in the summer months and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's something we should be able to accomplish. And then they get the food truck. Right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Know, it's so it's just combined. Yeah. I've seen it where they broadcast or, or uh, project onto a brick wall. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So remember, remember that movie, Cinema Par Paradisia? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They saved all the clips. Any yeah. 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 That's right. I've got that DVD. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let, let's see if we can come up with a definition for that. Um, and I have another uh, comment. Um, Max, do you want me to let you know about a typo on the definitions now? Um, I do notice that tidal waters is combined with theater, and that needs to be separated. Yeah, that's what I was going to mean. That, that's for water. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 All right, we'll end that. I'm glad you mentioned that, Sarah. Okay. Uh, vehicle sales, less than 15 vehicles. Uh, they're not allowed in the downtown anymore. CEO. That would be 15 vehicles on site. That's right. Yeah. Not, not volume. For the no. Vehicle sales, more than 50. That's to distinguish like small and large. Yeah. Uh, vehicle sales, more than 15. Not in the downtown, but on the uh, Route 1A and B. Those are also some fields on the 
and those are that's we haven't changed that. Um, vehicle service, we haven't changed that except we've taken it out of the downtown. Uh, veterinary clinic, it's all the same except in the village. We allowed it with planning board approval. Uh, wireless telecommunication, that remains the same. Wholesale business remains the same, except we've taken it out of rural village. Uh, woodworking, we put uh, planning board for rural, taking it out of rural village, and in the village it's um, code officer, planner, and in the other districts it remains the same. Can I ask a question about wireless? Sure. Uh, I know that we've covered towers, but what if with, with let's say, the mid-range or the, the high millimeter uh, bandwidths that need relays, and they simply wanted to put small uh, relay transmissions on some of the buildings, or even on some of the uh, fire, you know, the CMP poles, would that be permitted uh, or not permitted? Yeah, if they're under a certain height, they would be permitted. Otherwise, the larger ones are within, Max, is it 500 feet of Route 1? I think that's the limit. 400, I think. 400 feet, yeah. So I know because there's going to be, uh, what I'm reading is there's going to be a whole new vocabulary, which will not be towers. It'll be off of towers and relays to yep. get it closer to where you live. So you're saying that'll be permitted with it. Won't, that won't be yep. in violation of this. No, there'll be like whip antennas of some sort or something like that. I mean, they'll be all over on telephone poles. Right. Big buildings, yeah, no. Okay. Um, and then industrial uses, uh, boat storage, commercial, that hasn't changed. Uh, factory farms, um, we took it out of rural, uh, it's not allowed, and it is allowed, it hasn't changed in the, in the uh, industrial zone. Uh, you said factory farms? Factory farms. What is a factory farm? That's uh, like a... A large scale, like piggery, cattle operation, something like that. I, I couldn't hear you. What operation? It's like a large scale um, area for farming, uh, processing livestock, growing and processing livestock, pigs, chickens, something like that. Okay. It's something akin to what we find out in the mid Midwest. Do we even want that at all in town? I don't think we're allowed to get rid of it because of the permanent back, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, it, it's not something, Sarah, that I think is economically viable for our area at all. Well, I don't think we have any in the state of Maine, other than the chicken farms. Is the one the large one in Turner? Then, but you said that we have to include it because of some reason. Do we have to have five no, no, no. so we can get rid of it? We can we get rid of it. Yeah, this would not this would be a, a above and beyond agriculture. Yeah, I think we should get rid of it. Agreed. Really I was I was part of a discussion a few years ago when we were looking for other good agricultural things to go on in the area. And um, sheep farming came up and one of the things that inhibited additional sheep farming was there's no place to take sheep to turn them into food. Um, what is the name of that business that uh, slaughters animals and makes them ready to eat? And do we have a way to allow that in town if it surfaced? What's the name of the business that slaughters sheep? Well, yes. I mean, what's it, what's its code definition if there is one? Oh, that would process. be like food processing or something. Slaughterhouse. That's not a factory farm. That's okay. Well, but but would we be able to accommodate one within our regulations? It would probably be 
industrial or um good it is actually a bottleneck in sheep production, I'm told. Well, you have one of those up on Route 90 uh, that's, that's USDA certified. Yeah, yeah. More than likely on that scale, we, we consider that agriculture. Okay, I, I just, I, was just yeah. I, I wanted to be sure that we weren't prohibiting it no. because it's like a, no, a, fa a factory farm is not you know, um, slaughtering would be a part of that, but they're actually raising the animals. Um, it, it, they're not doing it in the traditional way of, you know, they run around on the fields or something like that. They're in combined spaces. You know, that, that just made me think about the, the meat processing. Yeah. And it sounds like no, that was this would be a different. Yeah. So meat processing would be just an industrial activity. Yeah. Uh, it might include, uh, in the definition of agriculture, you might include you know, slaughterhouse, slaughterhouse, which is it's not there now. In fact, I, I have a feeling that the people who want to grow eels um, will also process some of them for consumer. Yeah, that's not, that's not a problem. Either. That's not a problem. Uh, firewood processing commercial, we haven't changed that. Industrial, that hasn't changed. Uh, light industrial, we've taken it out of the downtown. Uh, sawmills, that hasn't changed. Charking terminals, uh, that hasn't changed. Warehousing, that hasn't changed. And then moving on to institutional uses. Uh, churches, a planning board in rural, and in the other districts, it's um, uh, CEO, planner, Route 1A and Route 1B is planning board. Uh, community service organizations. They're in C, uh, CEO planner in rural village, village, historic village and downtown. And we've taken them out of Route 1A and Route 1B. Um, hospitals. Nursing homes, convalescent homes, and commercial schools, uh, planning board across the board, and we've allowed them in rural and residential. Um, municipal buildings, that hasn't changed. Planning board across the board. Municipal solid waste facilities, uh, that hasn't changed. Uh, public buildings other than municipal, um, that hasn't changed. Public and private schools, we now include them in the residential and rural village, and we don't allow them in Route 1A and Route 1B. Municipal, um, does that contemplate something beyond town owned? Yeah. It could be a quasi-municipal organization, state, federal, county, county, you know, something like that. Okay. And then miscellaneous uses that that remains the same. Go to the shoreland zoning use chart. Max put this here from the shoreland zoning section. <clears throat> section. <clears throat> so the use charts will be in the same area, and none of this has changed. Uh, the planning board recently updated the ordinance, and um, I'm not quite sure we made any changes in the use chart. 
So this um, is what we've always had. Other than other than timber harvesting related oh, ones, right. but that's we'll because, because that was yeah. because we're moving to option one. Yeah. Uh, this remains the same, which is compliant with the state model ordinance. I'm not, I'm, unless somebody has any questions with it, I'm not going to go through it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we haven't deviated from this in the past. But in the, the state model. Um, with that said, we, we have to do some homework on outdoor kind of theater kind of thing. And also the, um, as George described, kind of like the hybrid growing operation that combine different disciplines or, you know, agriculture, aquaculture, or something like that, you know, different growing media, something that we should add, just insert that in the future. So we have those two tasks to do. We can move on to definitions. Next, do you want to hit just the ones first right off the bat that are new? Going from page one onwards for any changes, you'll see that they're underlined. So on page one, six, I'm just saying any new changes yeah, or any additions. Any so 16.1.5, it will now read the words governing authority means mean the legislative body of the municipality, which are the voters at a scheduled town meeting. Can, can I yep. go back to what we were talking about just before? Yep. There is a definition of a municipality, uh, which would not encompass uh, quasi public facility or, or county or state. Well, that's why the use chart says um, other than, I think. No, no. Let's see, let's yeah, see. other buildings and uses other than municipal. Right. Okay, but, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. But, but if a municipal building can use it, okay, school there are separate yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you got the school district there. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even think of school. Yeah. And actually, well, they have a separate category. Right, that's what I was saying. There's a separate category. And actually, I'm just remembering this now that we're looking at the chart again. Uh, there was also uh, similar uses to CEO approval. Am I adding those rows back in? There were cat. There's. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. I'm adding those back in. Back in. We're not changing those at all, no. other than just adding in similar uses to CEO. A few moments ago, somebody used the word or the phrase town meeting. Um, I hate to say this, but a town meeting used to be a bunch of people sitting on bleachers and then it no longer was. Um, it is a town meeting in our definitions because I think it's worthy of uh, clarity. Oh, actually, Matt, all we need to, the governing authority means the legislative body of the municipality. So take out the voter part? Yeah. Uh, no. Um, period. The, the original they vote is the, the town meeting is a form of the legislative body. You, we don't really have to say that. Okay. So am I just saying the words governing authority mean the legislative body of the municipality period? Period. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just to strike the rest. Yeah. Yep. So I didn't follow that. Did did the phrase town meeting just get removed? No, it, it's it's not that. The town meeting is a le the legislative body of the community. But how many people who look at this know that a town meeting isn't what we used to call a town meeting anymore? We haven't changed it. That's, the, that's, what, that's what the statute says. It's considered, we don't have a council form of government. So the legislative body is the town meeting. So the fact that people don't know what a town meeting is anymore doesn't Trouble right. anybody else? The governing authority is the legislative body, the municipality. There's two forms of legislative bodies in the state of Maine. One is a council form of government or the town meeting. We don't have a council form of government. Legislative body is the town meeting. 
And we don't have an open town meeting. We have a. It doesn't matter. It does, I know. That's yeah. It could be either way. Yeah, it could be a hybrid of both. Yeah. Right. No, apparently no one is worried about that. That's I'm, I'm just one voice. I was always amazed that we ended bleacher type town meetings without a town meeting. But anyway, I don't don't do into legal talk to me, and I don't mean that rudely. I just mean we got late. Well, I'm I'm glad moving on. Um, on page two. For accessory structure or use, the last sentence is removed with kitchen, sleeping, bathing, and sanitary facilities is a dwelling unit. That sentence is removed. And then right underneath it, accessory apartment is a new definition that we're adding in. An independent dwelling unit that has been added onto or created within a single family house. The accessory apartment has a separate kitchen bathing and sleeping areas from the principal residential building. Am I reading out the entire definition for all brand new definitions or am I just saying this is a new definition we're at? I would just say, because everyone has this. So yeah. Yeah, I think you just alert. Yeah. Okay. Um, agriculture related business that's also been added. And I do have the note from last time to move it after the after agriculture is in the definition. So that's gonna be moved over. Uh, affordable housing, it's changed. Uh, right after it says established by the Waldoboro Comprehensive Plan, and we're adding in and Lincoln County low moderate income data. Yeah. Are these meant to be in alphabetical order? Yes, and I know that they are not in alphabet, that there are some that are not in alphabetical order. Oh, okay. Well, um, basically, are you saying that does this mean that uh, housing, which means the sales price and so forth, uh, established by the comprehensive plan, utilizing Lincoln County low moderate income data? Is that, is that what you mean by that? Yeah, it's using both of those as sort of a... Um, well, how does the Lincoln County data fit into the Walden Borough Comprehensive Plan? It's more in the affordable housing because I'm talking about um, like uh, CDBG funds, for example, that specifically say you have to uh, have units go to a certain people making a certain income. That's the Lincoln County low moderate income data. Yeah, in, in the top plan, we define it as um, spending no more than 30%. Well, so, so basically, the plan utilizes the data from the county. It's a different source of material. It's getting to the same, basically the same thing. Two, di two different ways of looking at it. Well, I'm just, uh, okay. You come up with different numbers. I don't understand what the interface is. One is used by, um, as Max said, for, for grant sources, or if you're um, trying to pursue grant funds for a project or development, you would use the um, Lincoln County LMI data to uh, justify uh, the, the selection of your tenants. So maybe, maybe then it's just like and or. Could say that. Okay. And or. And or Lincoln County low moderate income data. Okay. Um, on page three, animal hospital is being removed since we have veterinary hospital and clinic defines elsewhere in the definitions. Uh, next, animal recreation. That's a new definition that we added in because of a new use. Animal, same thing. Animal services, same thing, new use. So a definition was added for that. And then down the page a bit, aquaculture, 
comma land based new use new definition. Marine plant. Oh, yeah. Or marine. Or animal species outside of the shore. Okay. Uh, page four has no new changes to any of those definitions. Cold storage promotion. That's the next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Sarah, were you saying something? Um, on page four, aquaculture land based is new, right? Uh, I just went over that. That was on page three. <laughs> My, oh, okay. My pages are numbered. But aquaculture land based, yeah, that's a new use. Um, could, could you read that? Because I don't have it in front of me. And I could you read that, please, Max? That one definition. Yep. I apologize. The the growing or propagation of harvestable freshwater, estuarian, or marine plants or animal species outside of the shoreland zone. Okay. Good. All right. So that was fresh or salt water. I think I heard. It doesn't matter. Well, right. Um, now, what I have for page five, boat building and repair. Uh, that's a new definition that was put in because we didn't have one originally. And then underneath that, we have boat storage commercial. We didn't have a definition for that originally, but we're adding one in. And then, and then at the bottom of page five, uh, building originally just told people to go to the definition of structure. Uh, I struck that and put in a definition for building. Any structure having a roof supported by columns or walls and intended for the shelter, housing, or enclosure of any individual, animal, process, equipment, goods, or materials of any kind, because I felt it was a good standard yeah we kind of need to have that in there uh same thing with building height for some reason it just told people to go to height of a structure so i included the that definition for that one uh on page six i included definition for brewery since that's a new use uh Business incubator, new use, new definition. And brewery, I would just say that brews lagers, comma, ales. Okay. Brews lagers and ales? Yep. Okay. Uh, business incubator, new use, new definition. Could you read that, please? Business incubator? Yes. A building that is planned, developed, and operated as a coordinated and integrated facility for several separate commercial uses with consideration for circulation, parking, signage, utility needs, aesthetics, and compatibility. OK. Circulation. As in just how people would operate inside the building. Right. Yeah. I mean, the the uh, field crest is a bit of that right now, and I I, I want to just make sure that we're not doing anything that undermines what seems to be a pretty good little thing. Consideration for interaction among. With you mean changing the word of circulation? circulation yeah. With consideration Inter for interaction. Interaction among tenants. Interaction amongst tenants. Yeah. Or with consideration for tenant interaction, parking. Yeah. Tenant yeah. interaction. Okay. Compatibility is a word that fits in here someplace, but I'm not sure where. Uh, that's the last word of last the word. definition. Okay. Okay. 
uh, moving on. Um, I added in just, it said CEO, so I just put in code enforcement officer just to clarify. Um, cemetery didn't originally have a use or it didn't originally have a definition, so I added that. Um, at the bottom of page six, change of use, it didn't have a definition, so I added that in there. Just because that is one of the usual terms for going to the planning board. Planning board. Uh, on page seven, clubs and civic service, just because we're combining those two together, we create a definition for it. And then that is it on page seven. Uh, back up one second then. Yep. There's, there's, I guess there's no definition of church elsewhere or uh, there's any good, or social religious. Huh? So that would include, uh, okay. Yeah. No, there is none for church. No, none for religious, so okay. So I can add one for church. Yeah, we can use, yeah. A church or a church or other. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, are you trying to say something? Yeah. I was. <laughs> um, isn't church included in clubs and civic service? No. no we, there we is have its own category. Separate use category. So we have a category. Yeah, it says relig social, religious, and benevolent. When it says religious for nonprofit association, that's talking about something like uh, nice a youth. Columbus. I was going to say a youth group or something. Oh, youth a youth group. group. Yeah. yeah. But wouldn't that youth group be part of a church? Not necessarily. I remember in, in college, there was a sort of a youth group uh, that was formed there and they didn't belong. It was like any religious group could go there. Yeah. Going back to the, uh, the use chart, institutional uses, instead of church, maybe we should say houses of worship. We could do that. Well, it depends yeah. on our definition. Well, I guess. Um, in our increasingly sensitive yeah. world, yeah. you know, uh, yep. places of worship, places of worship, yeah. place of worship, yeah, place of worship. yeah. Okay, Sarah, were you going to say something? Yeah. What about um, a political organization? Political is that, is that considered a club and civic service? <laughs> Good question. Um. We can add that in there. Yeah, I think. Just I, don't, I don't know whether it should be added or not. I'm just wondering. Well, when you're talking about that, are you saying like, um, like on in Damer Scott? I know there's the Lincoln County Republican headquarters, but that that's only there for like a few yeah, months for the election season. Oh, Organized for sports, recreation, political. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we could just add that in. Yeah. Yeah. As you, well, my point is that they usually last there just. Well, it could, it could be something that. Well, but we have a facility on um, Jefferson Street that um, appears to be political that is, the, is there all year round. Yeah. Ours is the one down Russell Street. Right, right near the high restaurant there. Republican. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Headquarters there. Yeah. Yeah. It probably should be included. Yes. Uh, All right. We just add political. Yeah. yeah. Just adding one word. Yes. Okay. Um, is there anything else for page seven? Moving on. Uh, page eight. Uh, crematorium. New use. So we added the definition. Uh, DBH, same thing with CEO, uh, didn't really specify what that meant, so I just included diameter at breast height. And that's it for page eight. Page nine, uh, distillery. I would just add the word alcoholic spirits. I was going to say, spirits. Yeah. It sounds like a church. <laughs> <laughs> help. Like 
Spirits. Um, underneath that, distribution and fulfillment center. New use, the definition. How come you didn't want to put drone in there? <laughs> drone. Drone? That's what the. Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's coming. I'm, I'm teasing. I mean, transshipment by air, just saying. They cover, you got it covered. I'm teasing. Yeah. Yeah. Third, but I want <laughs> Uh, and then at the bottom of the page, you'll see I even have my note for ecotourism. I couldn't find a definition, so I was suggesting to get rid of it. So I'll cross that out. Um, on page 10 for related building, I removed what plane. I removed the article that floodplain was referencing because we're planning on taking the article out and creating the floodplain ordinance, which is just a copy paste of what the article is. So I'm saying floodplain ordinance in the last sentence. Um, then further down, we have oh. the bank center. Sarah, are you saying something? Well, I might I might have the pages screwed up. I was uh, questioning event center. Yep, that was the next one. Oh, okay. Um, I do. Yeah, new use of new definition, Sarah. Yeah, something's mixed up here. My question about event center was um, the one mass gathering per week. Seems like a lot of events, and. Um, do we want to make we want the definition to be slightly less yeah because we have two different categories the major minor kind of thing i mean you could but, you, but you specify that in the specific standards i know but this could be just a general that uh, a, a building or parcel that hosts um uh, mass gap a building or parcel that is designed to Host mass gatherings. Yeah. Per week, one per week is yeah. very hard to do. No, that way, because you know, we're not specifying how many. Yeah. At least one mass gathering. That's no, it. I, no, you don't even have to say at least one. A building or parcel that is designed to host mass gatherings. Period. And that way, in the performance standards, uh, specific yeah. delineate. Be better. Okay. So, page 11, there were no changes. Uh, page 12, at the bottom of it, food truck, new use. So, we added a definition. Page 13. If I can wait, if people needed to read all that. Hearing none. Uh, page 13, food truck center, new use. And then underneath that is forestry. We didn't have a definition for that originally. So I added that in there. Moving on, fuel storage and distribution. We didn't have a definition for that originally. And same thing with funeral home and golf course. Back up for a second. Yep. Fuel storage distribution. Uh, combustible products would include uh, firewood, for example. Okay. Um, and I think that's covered elsewhere. Yeah. Um, uh, selling of 
I mean, you're, what, what, what non I'm bio. thinking of is, you know, uh, petrochemical or petro petroleum products and, yep. and maybe uh, coal, coke, whatever. So keeping and selling of um, combustible non-bio products. Does this get into the scale of it? I, no, no this, this is just the generic definition, yeah. Because there's also biodiesel, which is not petroleum based, but great fuel. Um, we, we'll, we'll, let's check that, Max, because there's, yeah, I know there's some standard language that references like the whole All right. Um, funeral home and golf course. We're just adding definitions into them. I'll show you. Uh, is this talking about golf courses? They're talking about driving ranges, which don't. I mean, is that, is that practice facilities? Okay, driving range. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Going on to page. Do we want to try and go through all the definitions tonight, or do we want to? And that it is usual because I think this is 35 pages, but yeah. the, a lot of them are. But I mean, that's 35 for it all. There's not. We could just pick it up the next time. We don't have much to do. But... And we got to get some new definitions. Yeah. You know, so. Am I end there for, for now. We'll yeah, pick, so we'll pick it up. Uh, greenhouse was the next. Yes, page 14. I move we adjourn. A second. Um, so remember the next meeting will be uh, two weeks from now. Today's the 10th, so 24th. 24th. Yes. All right. We're joined by unanimous consent. That's a good